वेलकम टू पॉइंटर कॉन्सेप्ट कोड नंबर फोर वी आर अगेन गोइंग टू टेक अ लुक एट अ पीस ऑफ कोड टू हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड एंड री एनफोर्स योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ पॉइंटर्स वी विल गो स्टेप बाय स्टेप एंड डायग्रामेटिकली ट्राई टू टॉक अबाउट वॉट हैपन एट ईच स्टेप सो दिस वे योर कॉन्सेप्ट टर्न आउट टू बी क्रिस्टल क्लियर आई हैव डिक्लेयर्ड a short integer si with the initial value 10 another short integer sj with the value 20 so at step number 1 what i have done is variable si is represented with the initial value 10 sj is represented with the value 20 then i am assuming address of si is 200 address of sj is 202 the reason this is at 200 is just a random number i have chosen and generally variables are given space one after the other short int occupies two bytes so at 202 you will have the next short int sj now let's see what happens in the next step in the next step what i am trying to do here is i have declared two variables which can hold addresses so these variables are known as pointer type variables the first is iptr and the next is jptr so first let's draw the variables so this square box represents iptr this square box represents jptr i am assuming iptr since it's a variable it exists at address 1000 and jptr also being a variable exists at address 1004 now what i am doing is i am assigning the address of si to iptr so what is the address of si it is 200 so 200 is the value contained in iptr whereas jptr i have made it null in the sense it is not containing any address it's a good practice to make it not refer to any address because otherwise by default a random number or a random address will get assigned to jptr and it may cause problems when you are trying to do certain pointer manipulations at the later stage so this is step number 2 we are okay with step number 2 now let's come to step number 3 what i am doing is i am copying whatever is the address iptr into jptr why am i able to copy the address from iptr into jptr because both are pointer variables of the same type both can contain the addresses of short integer variables so the address contained in iptr can be copied to jptr that's what i am doing here iptr address is copied to jptr so that's why now what i have shown the content of jptr is 200 because that is the address of si so iptr contains the address of si jptr also refers or points to the address of si now what i am doing is i am taking si and multiplying it by 5 so 10 into 5 si should end up becoming 50 so here if you see the new value of si is 50 at this particular step now look at star iptr is assigned the value star jptr plus si let's go with si first si simply refers to 50 no problem jptr refers to what address 200 star means what is the content or value at address 200 content or value at address 200 is now 50 because from 10 it is changed to 50 so this is 50 this is 50 50 plus 50 is 100 and what happens to what is iptr iptr is 200 star iptr is referring to this so si now ends up becoming 100 so here you will see si has now become 100 because it's taken the old value of si and the address referred to by jptr which happened to be 50 now let's come to the next step in step number 4 i have done something different i have taken the address of sj which is 202 and given it to iptr so here what you are seeing is at step number 4 iptr has taken the new address that is 202 which happens to be the address of sj now look at this long calculation it's quite simple nothing to really worry 
Let's try to go from this. What is IPTR? It is 202. Star value at address 202 is 20. All right. So it is first number which has to be added is 20. SI is how much? 100. So this is 100. Now what about SJ? SJ is 20. So you are adding 20. What about JPTR? JPTR is referring to address 200. What is the value or content at address 200? It is 100. So it is 20 plus 100 plus 20 plus 100. So this should be equal to 240. IPTR is referring to what? IPTR is referring to address of SJ. So this 20 will now get replaced with 240. Okay, this new value of SJ is going to be 240. So now if we go ahead and print, okay, the value of SI and SJ, we are not directly printing, we are printing JPTR. JPTR is what? JPTR is 200. What is value at address 200? It happens to be 100. So this will print 100. What is IPTR? IPTR refers to address 202. What is star? Value at address 202 happens to be 240. So it will print 100 here and then followed by 240. Now I am directly printing SI and SJ. So it's going to print 100 and 240. So you may on your own rewind this video and go stepwise you will easily understand pointers because the diagram makes it very clear how the data variables and the addresses are changing. Generally, I have made an attempt to write addresses in red so you clearly know what they are. Before we wind up, just would like to highlight a few points. Now, you need to understand that pointers are nothing but they are variables of a special type. In place of holding numbers, they hold addresses. So, a pointer is a variable which just stores address as opposed to normal variables which store numbers and characters and so on. You can simply think of remember the word pointer should click with the word address. Now, if you are writing a C program and you want to print the address of any variable, this is the correct way of printing the variable. Address of variable is equal to percentage %p. Whatever is the data type, Suppose where is integer, it will return an address to an integer type of variable. This void star will make it a normal address of a memory and you will get the address printed. But if you are looking at my programs when I am running on an online GDBC compiler, I will be using this to print the address. There is a reason for this. Percentage %p is going to print the address in hexadecimal numbers. That can be a little difficult for us to understand what they are because we are not using hexadecimal in day-to-day -day life. So this way what I am doing is I am converting that address into a long integer and I am printing it as a normal base 10 number so you are able to easily understand a base 10 number.